Hello and welcome to Inputs and Outputs, a look into automotive computer processing and uh, diagnosis. So our objectives today, describe automotive computer processing, describe what a computer input is, describe what a computer output is, identify how both circuits work in order to correctly diagnose the system. So a little bit, a little background. Uh, before we relied on computers, automobiles used simple electronic circuits to perform work. Think about headlights, charging circuit, ignition, etc. Just think about the circuits we've talked about in class uh, or your previous class, like Auto One. Uh, really simple circuits. I'm talking, like I said, headlights, charging, starter, ignition, coil, stuff like that. Very simple, non-computer circuits, uh, points, condensers, etc. One of the ways we've made automobiles more efficient is by using computers to process data and determine fuel ratio. I mean, this is the real intro to what computers do. But again, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a device that we use to process data. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about today is what is this data, this inputs, to determine fuel ratio, which is like an output, how to control a fuel injector. So um, basically, computers are just um, looking at inputs, processing, and then performing outputs based on their programming. So we're going to talk a bit about that process today. Um, we've continued to use computers to process various data to improve the user's experience. Again, this is going into more than just fuel ratio. Uh, we're talking about, I mean, computers can process data as far as GPS, um, yaw rate sensors uh, for drivability. Um, again, GPS can be used for navigation. It can be used for uh, comfort, right? If you're facing north and you have a sun you know, on your driver's side, depending if it's morning or night, you know, or which way you're pointing, the HVAC system will know that, and then they can actually manipulate the air temp coming out of your vent to make you feel more comfortable. That, that's obviously a computer byproduct. So that's kind of what we're talking about. But in gist, what computers are doing is basically copying us. So biomimicry, whether or not you've heard of the term biomimicry, you have benefited from it. Uh, biomimicry is basically the imitation of systems for the purpose of solving complex human problems. You're like, okay, that's a great college answer. But in layman's terms, it's basically the copying of nature and applying what we learn by observing nature to our lives, designs, and manufacturing. Uh, this, is, this is as simple as looking at a beehive and copying that honeycomb for strength in, in when it comes to engineering. Uh, biomimicry as applied to today with processing is, is what we do, our five senses. When I touch something, uh, and it hurts, or I see something that's bright, I process that as pain or bright, and I look the other way. That is my output. So that is basically how it applies to the automobile. So just think about how your brain works. Again, it gathers inputs, like your senses. You touch something hot, like on a stove, it, your, your brain processes that data and commands an output. That processed data says, ouch, and it's going to want to command an output. Okay, That output could be moving your hand, right? So again, that's controlling those muscle impulses to move your hand, saying that input is hurting, I need to move my hand. That's an output. And so that's basically biomimicry as applied to the automobile industry, is they're copying what's worked for us, and let's give that to the car to give that sense of illusion uh, uh, that, it, that it's alive. Uh, early computers on cars were called brains. I remember when I was a kid, the, the ECU, you know, PCM, was called a brain. Um, that kind of kind of went out of popular popularity but um that, that that's the gist is we are copying what we're doing and this is also known as if t -t -t. this process if t -t -t, is basically if the if this then that processing meaning the computer is looking for the if okay if this then that so it can process the output that's what we do every day if we see bright light then I, that is i move my head look the other way if my hand is burning my that is I'm going to move my hand. Again, that's biomimicry. This is what we're doing on the car. So we can take those comp, those simple circuits, excuse me, and then make them more complex but more beneficial to solve our, our problems. All right, so now what? I basically make those points so I can say this. Computers use voltage, amperage, and resistance to perform if this, then that. So you look at those complex schematics and get overwhelmed, but apply what you've learned so far with Ohm's Law. Right? Think about simple circuits. Uh, a series in parallel, uh, voltage, think about voltage rules, voltage up to the open, right? 0.1 or less after the last load. Think about amperage. In a series circuit, it's always the same. In a parallel circuit, both branches add up to the total circuit current, right? Think about resistances. If I add more branches, or I'm going I'm to lower circuit resistance, increasing circuit current, right? These are Ohm's law, uh, uh, basically, that we've gone over. 
the computer is going to use that type of signals, voltage, amperage, or resistance, to monitor inputs and then process that data and perform the outputs. That's the if strategy. Okay. So just again, just think about Ohm's law, what you learned so far, um, how to measure voltage in the circuit, how to measure amperage, how to measure resistance, because that's basically all the computer's doing. It's a really expensive DMM uh, that you know how to operate. Okay, so the computer's expensive DMN that can interpret that data, process it based on programming, and then provide an output. That's the biomimicry of if this, then that. It's fascinating, and it's actually quite simple to work on. So we'll take a little bit about that now. So we're going to look at that right now. So inputs. Think about all the sensors that are in an automobile. Okay, go ahead and take a second. Think about all those sensors. I'll wait. So how many sensors did you come up with? One? Two? There are lots, right? These sensors are used by the computer to give it information about the outside world or the computer's operating characteristics. Most of these sensors fall into a few types, including switch, two-wire temperature NTC, negative temperature coefficient thermistor, a three-wire analog, a three-wire digital. Okay, now, of course, there are also two-wire position sensors. Um, there's pressure, gas, airflow sensors. Those are going to have to be saved for another day. This is an intro into inputs and outputs, so I chose some simpler circuits that are broad, meaning many, many components, uh, many, many in, uh, sensors use those four categories I mentioned, the switch, the two-wire temperature, negative temperature coefficient, the three-wire analog, and the three-wire digital. So I'm going to spend some time today basically talking about those four inputs, the processing, and then the output uh, along with that. Okay, So input switch. Basically, as we previously discussed in class, a switch is used by the computer as an input. Um, think of it this way. Think about the circuits that you can remember using a switch, right? What does a switch do? It's going to complete that circuit, right? If you look at a series circuit with a bulb, when you close that switch, you're basically closing that circuit, completing it so current can go through and do work, right? So that's basically how we're going to diagnose these circuits. Here, let me elaborate. The computer can monitor the position of the switch by using Ohm's law. So think about Ohm's law when it comes to a series circuit or, or, or parallel circuit too in the individual branches. If you have an open in a circuit, where does that voltage go to? That voltage goes to the open, right? So if I open a switch, that voltage is going to go up to the open of that switch, regardless if the switch is before or after the load. So based on that, I can put a, a DMM or voltmeter in that circuit from the computer, and I can monitor the position of that switch, right? So that switch position can determine whether or not a door is open or the level of a fluid, like think brake fluid, right? There's a float in there. When that float gets down too low, it closes the switch or contacts. Uh, think about brake switch. Think about door uh, position if it's open or closed. All of these switches on these mechanical devices, the computer can monitor whether something's open, you're pushing on something, or a fluid low or high, etc. So a switch is a very, very versatile circuit that the computer uses to monitor those mechanical positions. And again, it's going to do that using Ohm's Law. So I'll show you a schematic here in a little bit, and we'll go into it deeper. But I want you to think about how simple the switch is. And again, voltage up to the open. If the switch is closed, I'm going to have voltage up to the load and 0.1 after the load. If the switch is open, regardless where the switch is, I have voltage up to that open, right? And again, this will make sense when I show you a few more schematics, okay? So here's a simple one right here. And I'm going to highlight here, right here, there's a door switch right here. So here inside the computer, this is the part you don't see when you look up schematics for your car, typically. So right here, you have coming out of this spot where you can't see, it's about 5 volts, let's say, okay? 5 volt reference, it could be 12 volts, but we'll go with 5 volts for sake of uh, this lesson. Right here is a fixed resistor, and this is what I mean by dividing the circuit. So we have a fixed resistor right here, and then this arrow represents a DMM, right? A little voltmeter right here. And then it comes out of the computer. Now you see this as a sensor input, and it's going to a switch. So when the door is open, this switch closes, right? And now the computer is going to monitor this section for voltage. And if you remember what we talked about with Ohm's Law, Look at the switch. So the door is closed. The switch is open. Now, if I have 5 volts right here before that fixed resistor, I'm going to have voltage all the way up to the open. Agreed? To the tip of the switch. Well, look at the computer. It's monitoring voltage right here. So it's going to see that 5 volts. 
but when I open the door, which closes the switch, this whole circuit goes to 0.1 or less after the load, because remember Ohm's law? After the last load, 0.1 volts or less. So that computer right here is monitoring. It sees five volts go to 0.1. Well, it knows that you just opened the door. So if there's programming in this computer, and if this, then that, like let's say if the door is opened, then turn on the ceiling light, right? Simple strategy. We're talking about inputs right now, but that's basically how a switch circuit works over here. And I got one up top here. Here's power coming through. And then here's a switch. It goes on down over here as an input to a fixed resistor. And then down here is going to be a ground instead of a 5 volt reference. But the AC is it's AC pressure input for the computers right here, a little voltmeter again. So when this pressure switch opens, like I'd say it's too much pressure, switch opens. It no longer has 12 volts of the circuit. This all goes to zero. And then the AC input right here sees that go to zero. And it's going to know that there's a problem in the AC circuit. It can set a DTC and let the tech know what to look at. So again, that's basically the inputs for a switch. Um, super simple circuit. We'll elaborate more on that next lesson. Uh, next one we will look at is uh, two wire thermistors. So thermistors are variable resistors that change resistance with heat. Okay. They can be either be NTC or PTC. That's going to be negative temperature coefficient or positive temperature coefficient. Now, what does that mean? Basically, uh, an NTC, negative temperature coefficient resistant, resistor, the resistance goes down as it gets hotter. Now, this is opposite of what you think. That's why it's called negative. And then PTC, positive temperature coefficient, as temperature goes up, resistance goes up. And that's pretty normal. But on a variable thermistor, like what we use for temperature sensors in the car, it's going to use an NTC, which again, the resistance goes down as it heats up. So these variable resistors is what the computer uses with Ohm's law dividing the circuit to determine temperature of various fluids and air uh, at different locations, basically. What I mean by different locations, you're looking at air in the cabin, ambient air, uh, intake air. You're looking at fluids in the engine, fluids in the transmission, uh, uh, varied battery temperature. So all of these temperature sensors, exhaust temperatures, pyrometers, all these sensors are using a variant of this variable thermistor, an NTC thermistor. So we'll look at that circuit again, and now we're going to look at basically how that, that variable temperature sensor works. So right here I have an outside air temperature sensor, and as you see it's got the variable resistor schematic icon that we learned about a few lessons ago. And then over here I have a fixed resistor. So this circuit has to, it uses a divided circuit for it to work. Now let me explain. This voltage regulator right here is going to step down from the 12 volts to a 5 volt reference. Okay, that gives a very stable voltage that's going to be used by the computer to monitor specific temperatures. That 5 volt reference comes out, goes through this fixed resistor, and it comes over to the variable resistor, and then it comes back to the computer to a sensor ground internal to the computer. Now remember Ohm's law, after the last load is what? That's right, 0.1 or less. So right here on this pin down is going to be 0.1 or less. Above it right here, this section right here is going to change based on this resistance. So me, 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 try this a different angle. Up here is always 5 volts, right? Agreed. Up to this resistor. That's always 5 volts. And then always on this green part right here, this is always 0.1 or less. Now this blue section, this blue section changes voltage based on the resistance of these two resistors. Well, we know this one's fixed, so it can't change. This one's variable. It changes resistance based on temperature, right? So as it's whatever it's dipped in, or if it's in outside air, like in this case here, that resistance changes based on temperature. Well, as this resistance goes down, let's say it gets hotter because it's a negative temperature coefficient, it gets closer to being a ground, which means the closer it gets to being a solid wire through here. If this becomes a solid wire, then what is my voltage on the blue wire? That's right, close to 0.1 because this after the last load right here, all this becomes 0.1 or less. If this becomes cold and gets high resistance, closer to an open, then this whole blue section goes up in voltage. So the computer's going to monitor right here. Here's the DMN internal to the computer. It's going to monitor this change in voltage to figure out the temperature of the car. Now, again, I'll elaborate this more on next lesson when I actually pull up this. I'll make the circuit on my test board, and we're going to go through and show you how to diagnose that um, a little bit better. This basically concludes part one. Go ahead and come back for part two, and we'll talk about the rest of the inputs and more outputs.